Mogulvations with Lene Javet, CEO and founder of Colsire.com. Um, as you know, we do talk to entrepreneurs on Mogulvations so that we can provide mogul motivation to all those out there in the world, specifically in the black community, but to everyone that's in the world. Today, I'm going to be talking to one of my good friends, Miss Ruby James, the CEO and founder of Exusia Marketing. How you doing, Ruby? I'm oh, great, Lene. How are you? I am doing great. I wish I could be where you are. You're sitting outside, it looks like. I am. I decided it was a beautiful day. Why not just come outside to get a fresh breath of air? <laughs> oh man, you see, I'm sitting here, uh, uh, clogged up in my in my room, uh, shooting videos. I wish I could uh, change places with you. It's, every now and then, you know, entrepreneurship. You're, you're constantly moving, moving, moving. So every now and then, it's necessary to just stop and take a breather and just <sighs> take it all breather. in. So tell the people uh, who you are and what you do. So I am Ruby James, and what I primarily do is I do graphic design services. I do website design services and social media marketing. So basically, um, I'll take the website, and most of the time the customer may not have a logo, or they may not have um, all of their ducks in a row, so to speak. So I'll help them with their branding, with the logo design, with the business cards, to make sure that everything is is consistent across the board. That is awesome. And we need more of that. Uh, I noticed personally that there's not always consistency. Eventually, you get to a place where you're consistent, but not necessarily, you don't necessarily start out the gates as a startup, uh, you know, with consistent branding, consistent marketing, consistent information. And so that's what your company helps people do, basically. Right, absolutely. Um, and I guess probably because it's my profession, it is a pet peeve when I see your business card may be yellow and black, but then your lo your website may be blue and or purple. And then so when the customer sees one, they're kind of left wondering if they're even at their if they met the same person mm -hmm. because they they're thinking when they when you handed them the business card, they're thinking yellow and black. But then when they go to the website, they're seeing blue and purple. Yeah. So it kind of conflicts. Absolutely. So how long have you been doing this? How long have you been in marketing? Um, Inzusia Marketing Group has been established now for, for 11 years. Wow. Um, I've actually, I started graphic designing when I was in high school. Um, and so it started out kind of as a hobby. And of course, as technology has progression, as I became older, um, kind of hone in on some things and that's when I decided okay it's time to get serious I'm not gonna continue doing it as a hobby let's just go ahead and make it an occupation so what we hear from a lot of entrepreneurs is that they found something that they love doing or something that they were passionate about and that's how they created their business that's kind of it seems like that's what worked for you as well exactly um I love taking an idea or concept and just playing with it to make turn it into a reality. I always tell my customers, I like to take your vision, your goal, your dream, and turn it into a reality. Because for me, it's something about being able to kind of manipulate colors and being able to get everything and play with this text, this font, this, and just put it all together. Um, it's like a whole nother world for me. I absolutely love it. That's good. I don't have that creative energy at all. I'm a strategist, so I can strategize, I can put things together, but when it comes to being creative and colors, I, I, I'm not good at that. But I, you know, I know my lane, and I, sometimes I think as entrepreneurs, it's important to know what our lane is so that we stay in it. Like I know when I need to hire somebody that does marketing, I know when I need to hire somebody that does branding because that's not my lane. And I think that when it comes, you know, especially as entrepreneurs, we sometimes take on more tasks than what we're experts at, shall we say. And that, that is, you're absolutely correct, Lene. And that's one of the things that I tell entrepreneurs all the time. Um, you wear so many hats. One day you may be an accountant. Literally the next minute you may be trying to, you know, be the marketing person. Then the next minute you're trying to be the legal person. And so you take that hat off and you're being an administrative assistant. And so one, it's hard for one person to wear so many hats. And, you know, as entrepreneurs, I get it. You may not have a budget for marketing. You may not have a budget for legal. You may, So you kind of start where you are. But at some point, you should really get to the point where you say, okay, I can't do this. In order to take my business to the next level, I'm going to have to hire someone. I'm going to have to pull someone in to help me out with this. Absolutely. 
So you've been, you've had Exusia Marketing for 11 years. Have you been an entrepreneur for 11 years or longer? I've actually been an entrepreneur for 11 years okay. as well. And when you started out, let's say out of, outside of, um, you got out of high school, whatever you did after that, did you know you wanted to be an entrepreneur or did you just find, or was it a passion and that you turned into a business? No, it's actually, I knew, um, I look at it completely different now today than what I, how I looked at it then. But it's so funny, um, my 12th grade year, my senior year in high school, we had to do a journal. And in that journal, we had to say, answer a whole lot of questions. And so the, one of the questions was, what do you see yourself doing? Where, what are your goals and what do you see yourself doing? And it was funny because I actually put on in the journal that I wanted to own my own business and that I wanted to be retired by 45. Now, we may not get to that point, <laughs> but <laughs> the thought was there that I did want to own, um, own my own business. And I'm so blessed and grateful because everything has literally happened um, how I set it out to at that particular time. Now, I didn't know exactly what um, area of computers that I wanted to go in when I first started, but I did know I want to do something with computers. Oh, that's great. So you knew you wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I think there's people out there, they're like, you know, I want to start a business. I just don't know what I want to do. So mm -hmm. you knew you wanted to start a business. You knew you wanted to do something that was on, on your own. Right. You knew that you wanted to be into computers. How did you segue into Better yet, how did you narrow that down? So if somebody's out there and they're like, you know, I really want to start a business, but I don't know how to pick a business, what would you tell someone in that situation? To kind of go back to what we said earlier, start with your passion. Um, as an entrepreneur, you have an entrepreneur mindset. You're already probably a go-getter. It's pretty safe to say you're a go-getter. It's pretty safe to say you're ambitious um, if you're a true entrepreneur. And so you're going to have ideas. You're going to have um concepts you're going to have different things that you may be good at you know we hear jack of all trades master of none mm -hmm. but that one the thing that you are most passionate about so for example um i've done a couple mlm i was good at and i've actually done two and i was good at both of them where i made money one of them was a fun i actually kind of consider it as a hobby the other one not so much i did it because someone asked me to do it I said, hey, why not? I need the extra income. So I did it. But hindsight, at the end of the day, in between all that, I realized that doing the graphic design, doing the what that's where I find my passion. That's what I can literally stay up around the clock. Mm -hmm. So one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning doing that other stuff. Yeah, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I would have probably clocked out about hours six or seven. Like, OK, this isn't for me. I can't do that. So I say I would to answer that question. I would say wherever your deepest passion lies, and it's going to be obvious because that's going to be the thing that you can see yourself doing hours, hours, yes. and staying up late at night, and and sacrificing your favorite TV show for. If you're doing, let's say, MLM or um, and there, some of them are just good, but if you're doing one that you have to force yourself. Every time you do a party, if it's that type of, every time you do, you know, go to a show, you got to, then that's probably not it. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely have to be passionate about what you do. If you're going to be, if you're going to sacrifice hours of sleep, if you're not going to uh, get sleep, watch TV shows. I don't, I, I, I make time to swim with my kid, but I literally sacrifice everything else to work on Cole Sire. And I think it's your your energy that fuels you. Like when you're working on something that you're passionate about, your energy fuels you and keeps you motivated. This past week, I've literally pulled three, four, five a.m. nights, mornings, working, working hard to get things done. Um, but it doesn't even feel like it. Like you know, I, I'm excited. I, I wake up in the morning still eager to get back to work. So you do have to have that commitment to your passion. You talked about sacrifice. What type of sacrifices have you had to make as an entrepreneur? You said it. Sleep. <laughs> my biggest, that has been my biggest battle is, I mean, it's sleep. Um, because especially depending on which, as an entrepreneur, depending on where you are with your business, if you are still that person um, that's wearing all those hats, you're going to have to stay up. Mm -hmm. Because during your primary daytime hours when you're operating your normal day-to-day -day business, that's when you're really spending the time to actually do what it is that you are in business to do. Those wee hours in the morning and those late, late nights, that's when 
you know, you're strategizing and that's when you're setting up your systems and that's when you're, you know, figuring out what's your next move. You can't, I mean, you can do that during the day, but what else could you be doing during the day that is specifically for your business? Um, our, we, I have a mentor, uh, Dr. Will Moreland, that actually says, you know, you have specific things um, that you should be working on your revenue generating activity uh -huh. and so those are the things that are going to make you money well in late at night you may not be able to work on that I'm not a big TV fan so that's not a sacrifice for me <laughs> but definitely some sleep and I even say there are times I do you have to have a balance um, and especially if you have a passion for what you're doing like you said earlier you make time for your son because it's necessary but when you have such a deep passion for what it is that you're doing Sometimes you can get caught off, um, get off balance to the point where you're actually spending a little too much time. And so for me, that has been the case in the past. And so I try to maintain a, really a balance. And so there are times when I may have, there are times I may have to sacrifice time with my family mm -hmm. in order to work on Exusia. That does happen. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, your husband works on Exusia with you, correct? He does. He does. Um, he is my biggest supporter. He says all the time, he's my number one fan. He's my cheerleader. And having that support system is vital in in whatever it is. There's not a business that I can think of that anyone can go into without having a solid support system. Everyone's not married, so it may not be your spouse, but you need some type of support system if you're going to make it. Don't go thinking um, when you start a business that you're in it by yourself and you're alone. Now, you better gather up some people. You better get your team mm -hmm. and form you a power team that's going to be able to be there for you, help you, push you, promote your, what you're doing. So encouragement is necessary. Um, I know I find that, you know, you have to, I think that sometimes it makes it harder for us as entrepreneurs or solopreneurs or the individuals that wear so many hats when we, so we don't surround ourselves with peop, with other individuals that have the same purpose and mission that are uplifting, that are encouraging, that are on our team, that can motivate us. Um, because if not, then you, then, you know, you may have those friends that talk about your business. Oh, you're doing that little business mm -hmm. or here she goes again, trying to start something different. Who does she think she is or whatever the case might be. And you do have to distance yourself a little bit from, I don't want to call them negative people, but people that aren't feeding into your purpose, your mission, your vision and supporting your team. Um, so do you, what kind of people do you surround yourourselves with outside of your husband? Do you have, do you have, do you keep girlfriends or, or do you do more networking? Are you in entrepreneur circles? How do you keep positive energy around you? A little bit of, um, all of what you said, actually, um, more so like the networking piece mm -hmm. and I have different people in my life. It's kind of like a refrigerator, I guess there's different compartments and in each compartment, I have a different set of a group of people. So, for example, my family is, they support me, but I can only expect my family to support me in certain things because they don't know about Exusia and they don't really support me when it comes to Exusia, but they're necessary whenever I'm tired and I just want to hang out and let my hair, you know, let my hair down. Yeah. Whereas, and I know I'm not going to be judged, judged for that, whereas I have my entrepreneurial circle where I'm going with them, you know, and we're talking about business. They're um, sharing information with me. I'm sharing information with them. I may not be able to, I can't be as real, I guess, with them um, and authentic as I could with my family because they knew me as a little girl. Like, mm -hmm. I can't talk about my childhood memories with those people that um, I've networked with. And not to say that I'm not authentic with them because I am, but it's just, like I said, it's just different compartments. If you try to put your, you try to put your butter in the freezer and get ready to take it out in a, you know, in a, in a hour or two hours, it's not going to work. And so for me, and then I also have another very important um, support group, and that's my church family. Some of my church family are entrepreneurs, and some of them are not. Well, for the the group of people over here in this compartment that are not, um, that doesn't share the same faith. They're going to look at me like I'm crazy if I say, you know, I, I'm going to do this. I really believe in, you know, and my faith and I have faith that this is going to work. 
they're gonna look at me like I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I have I definitely have those different um the different groups of people and different uh sets of people that I know I can go to for different areas of my life. Um because it is vital. You need you need someone that that you can just, you know, like I said, just talk to about different aspects of your life because everyone is not going to understand every compartment of your life. Absolutely. And it's unfair for us to expect any one person to say, Oh yeah, I know, yeah, been that oh yeah. No, that's not real. <laughs> Absolutely. I completely get that. I actually uh do the same thing for the most part. You have to have your spirit fed, you have to have your entrepreneurs fed, but then you just have to have your authentic self fed as well. Um, because right. you do wear the different hats in your entrepreneurial life, but you also wear them in your day to day life. And I think that that might be some of the some something that holds individuals back when they want to become an entrepreneur. They may not feel like they have the proper resources or the proper information or the proper education in order to become an entrepreneur. But that's where those different buckets of your network come into play. You have you get around entrepreneurs that know how to talk the talk and know how to build a business. You get your you know your internal spirit fed close to your family, the people that encourage you and believe in you and see what you're doing. But then you also you know I'm a spiritual person. I'm a Christian as well. So I, get, I need that spirit. Uh, I need my spirit to be full as well. So I also do that um, refrigerator tactic uh, where I (laughs) have my different compartments. So let's see what else is on here. So when you started your business, I always like to ask this question because there's a lot of people out there that want to have a business and they may not have the finances. So one of the biggest questions I receive is how to start a business. So whenever I have these um, candid conversations, I like to ask entrepreneurs, how did you financially start your business? Did you bootstrap? Did you get an um, an investor? Did you get a bank loan? What was it like starting a business from a financial perspective? Well, honestly, um, for me, I didn't have a lot of overhead costs when I started um, because my talent, you know, for me, it was more of talent and just getting in there and designing. All I needed to start really was a computer and some software. Uh-huh. So my overhead cost really was not as... Um, stringent as someone let's say you know who's opening a storefront um and someone who needs a lot of uh, inventory so but i know there definitely are resources out there um like for example the sba there they offer several options and now uh, crowdfunding uh, is also uh, an option Mm -hmm. um but my main once again going back to one of my my biggest supporter really was my husband because though I didn't have inventory. There were still things that was needed, you know, the marketing materials. So I did have some overhead costs and my biggest supporter, which is my husband. Um, anytime I basically told him I needed something, he said, okay, you, well, if it fits in the budget, then go for it. And so that, that makes a, a big difference. Um, and as an entrepreneur, it, it, it should be expected whenever you start a business to know off top that you're going to have more expenses initially than you are income. I mean, it's mm-hmm. not going to just start pouring in without you putting anything out. Um, we always hear the phrase, it takes money to make money. Yep. Scare yep. money don't make money. I mean, you know, there's so <laughs> many different uh, things, but it's all, it's all true, you know? Yep. So I, I say prior to starting a business, Sit down and find out what your, what all your expenses are. Find out exactly what all you're going to need. Um, I wouldn't just immediately revert to going to a bank to get a bank loan because there are other avenues out there. Um, I think you even mentioned, and there may be some angel investors. You would be amazed at how many people that would be willing to help you if you told them what you needed. But you have to have a game plan um, because you don't want, even if you did get that good group of supporters and then they financially so poured into you, invest in you, you wouldn't want them to have just wasted their money because yeah. then you kind of burnt that bridge. Mm-hmm. And so if you ever need them again, it's less likely that you're going to get that same support. Burnt that bridge and possibly and any other bridges that you may look at to uh, invest in your business or your company um, financially. Right, exactly. Yeah. I've been blessed. Thank you for uh, an angel investor that's reached out to me and offered me $10,000. And, you know, when I asked her, I was like, you know, 
why, why me? I mean, I know why me, but I want to know why you think me. <laughs> and she was just like, you're consistent. She's like, I've seen you from beginning to here. You haven't stopped. You, you've grown. Your message hasn't changed. You've evolved. You've gotten better. She's like, and I just want to see you keep that trajectory. And I've just felt so blessed. Um, I think it's important that we don't know who's watching us. We don't know who's paying attention to what we do. Um, but there are people out there that are watching us that want to see us grow, that want to see us be successful. And so angel investors, I think, I think the beautiful, I think that's a great term because you don't know who's going to be your blessing. Literally just received the phone call. just like, I want to, I want to give you $10,000. Really? I'll yeah. thank you just, just for doing what I do. So I think that that's important. Let's talk about, um, preparation. What prepared you to be an entrepreneur? What do you think, um, growing up or, or, or your talent or skills, what do you think has helped you to be an entrepreneur for 11 years? That's, that's, I mean, that's, that's significant time considering most businesses fail between the first three to five, five to seven years. Well, as far as what um, gifts and talents, I guess just that creativity mm -hmm. um, in terms of, the skills needed, I would say, it all, it kind of started with when my mom got our first computer, and I'm not going to uh, really go into a great amount of details, uh, but I think once she got the computer, there was something that ignited on the inside of me that, it, like, hey, I like this, I love this, I can see myself doing this, and I really felt like the world was at my fingertips, you know, when I sat down and would start playing with different things. And so um, I guess for me, it was more of just being having that, having the opportunity just to play and play. And then that led to a hobby and, you know, then to a profession. So do you have any issues with being your own boss in the sake of making sure that you wake up every day and get your work done, making sure that you meet deadlines? Um, do you, would you say, talk to us about the discipline. What, what is it? What kind of <laughs> discipline does it take to be an entrepreneur? Because I remember when I, when I actually, when I was still in corporate America, I used to tell myself all the time, there is no way I could work from home. I need to be sitting at a desk. I need to have some of the responsibilities. I need to, because I didn't think that I would work well at home with so much freedom. Um, but then when you take away your income and you have nothing else coming in, but the work you do, girl, I'd be up, I'd be showered, <laughs> I'd be working. <laughs> that discipline changed. You know what, Lene? I think some people are born with that drive, that passion that we keep um, mentioning. That's definitely going to drive a, a lot of things as well. So... I think it definitely takes an enormous amount of discipline. Some people may um, disagree. Some people may even hate what I'm about to say. But the truth of the matter is everyone's not going to be an entrepreneur. Every, entrepreneurship is not for everyone. Just like salesman, being a salesman is not for everyone. Being a TV, you know, host, TV show host is not for everyone. Being, it's the same thing with entrepreneurship because everyone does not naturally have that drive. Yes, we all, in a sense, have a need and a drive to survive, but all of us are not necessarily willing to do what it takes for that survival. Mm -hmm. And so you you were able to do that because you're an entrepreneur, but not everyone is. And so you kind of you really have to be real real within yourself to say, you know, okay, am I going to do this? Can I commit? Because some people do have a commitment problem. Some people have a discipline problem. Well, you're not going to be able to watch. Eight hours of TV. You have to kind of pick your favorite shows. If you're going to watch it, you got to pick your favorite shows. You may not be able to watch it when it comes on. Mm -hmm. And so all of that takes discipline. Will you miss a meal? Absolutely. <laughs> I miss so many lunches, so many <laughs> breakfasts. And so it's like, I mean, I look like it, but I do. <laughs> but, you know, and that's just the thing. You have to be disciplined. If you know you have, because like, you talked about meeting deadlines. As an entrepreneur, you have deadlines that have to be met. Um, no one's going to come over your shoulder and say, hey, I told you I needed that by today at 4 o'clock. What are you doing? No one's going to do that. Mm -hmm. But yet your customers are going, it's going to reflect on your business when you don't meet that deadline. Absolutely. And I guarantee you, if you continue that, you know, in that cycle, then you won't be successful and you won't stay in business. Um, but also, I think 
It takes discipline with every, in every area, in your sleep. It takes discipline with, with your finances. Yeah. It takes discipline in your eating habits. It takes discipline in every area that you could possibly think of because there are times when – it's like being a student as well. You know, there's times when your family and everyone else is just chilling. Well, guess where I am when everybody else is chilling? Yeah. I am in my office working. Okay. So, you know, like you said earlier, I'm not – right now because I'm you know just taking this moment but it's, this is not every day all day you uh-uh. know um the discipline says okay as much as I want to go get in the pool as much as I want to just chill I can't do that no no so do you find that um the people around you have a harder time with your discipline than you absolutely yeah. um a lot of people will say how do you do it like uh, literally just about two days ago I say um, we were sitting around at my dinner table and my, my husband and my kids are like, mom hasn't been to sleep. Mom didn't go to sleep for like two days and shit. And I'm like, I'm okay guys. I promise I'm okay because the body's going to let you know when it's tired. Uh-huh. And I will say, you know, um, definitely listen to your body. And I'm not saying you have to stay up every night, you know, seven days a week. That's not, it's not that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you have to know when enough is enough. You have to listen to your body. You have to listen to your workload. You have to be able to have systems and balances to know, okay. So, for example, as a, especially as a mother, um, whether you're single or not, married or single, it doesn't matter. As a mother, there are certain responsibilities that we have. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? You have to eat. Yeah. Your son yes. has to eat. <laughs> My kids, they have to eat. So, at some point, i got to go to the grocery store. Mm-hmm. Well, the grocery store may not be open um I mean, we all have Walmart, but if your favorite grocery store is, you know, Kroger or not all Kroger's are open 24 hours, public, they're not open 24 hours. And so you have to go to your store. We got to make the time in your schedule, whether you say, okay, I'm going to do it at nine or whether you say, okay, I'm going to do it, you know, and when I first wake up from nine to 10, but you get caught up, I should say you meet a friend or whatever, and you're staying there. And now you've been out of the office for the first four hours. But when are you going to make that four hours up? It has to be a time when you can make that time up. Yeah. Yeah. Time management is extremely important, I think, as an entrepreneur. You know, we're talking about work-life balance, um, discipline in your business, uh, systems, processes, all of that is relevant. One of the one of my biggest things I'm teaching on and, and that I'm an advocate of right now is operations. I don't think that a lot of us, especially in our community, have the proper operations for our business. We run businesses, we run, you know, we're out there, we're touching our business, we're putting our fingers on our business mm-hmm. every day so that it runs, but we haven't put we haven't necessarily put the processes and systems in place so that our business operates without us being there. Um, so it's one of the areas where I plan on really getting more involved with black businesses is in how they operate their business. How are you getting back to your customer? What does your customer say about you? How much time are you spending with your family? You don't want to put this much energy into creating a business and having a business and then you separate yourself from your family because that's really what we work hard for, right? Like I know I, I put my heart and soul into my business for my for my family. So let's talk and about... That is very... Go ahead. Oh, I was saying that is very important. And that's why I say you do have to have a, a balance. And, they, and I'm glad you, you know, you made that point. Let's talk about um, profitability. Because you, you've been in business for 11 years. So you actually have, I think you'll have a, a good perspective on how long it takes for a business to be profitable. You've been in business for 11 years. What were the first three years like financially? And then also tell us, when you became profitable, what, what kind of work did it take to become profitable? Hard work to be profitable. All right. Um, but I mean, for as I think because it's a business thing, that answer will vary from um, business to business, entrepreneur to entrepreneur. Um, and I think a lot of it even goes back to what we mentioned earlier about the discipline. So let's say there may be a business that may, um, they may exceed in sales, but if they go on a you know a splurge, um, and with with business, especially when it when we speak about the financial um, aspect, it definitely takes some it's learning. It definitely takes some wisdom because what what can happen is 
you find yourself in a midway point and I think that's what happens to a lot of business especially around that third year where they started making money and things are, are growing and so immediately you get excited and you want to just go jump off and just you know do make you know make the change world and so you start making purchases that you're not quite ready for just yet Gross. and so that essentially will hurt your business and being if that happens you end up you feel like I start all the way back over in year one uh, um, with kind of at the bottom. And so I really think um, the financial side of it, where a company is from year, year one to year three, greatly depends on not just sales. The sales is a good piece of it, but it, it's not just the sales. It's also what they're doing with the money that they do bring in. What are they doing with their profits? How? how they budget and what's going on, you know, in that process as well. So growing, there is such thing as growing too fast. And I know that I've heard where businesses, to your point, say that they became profitable and they started spending money on these other avenues to grow their business. And then they ended up losing money because they grew too fast. Um, but the question I was asking you, and it's more specific to you and your business. And the reason why I asked this question is because I like to give a, um, our viewers the opportunity to get a wide variance on um, when people become profitable. I We've heard people becoming profitable and turning a profit in the first month of business. We've heard where it's taken, you know, 11 months. We've heard where people have been in business and they didn't actually see a profit on their business for three years. So the question is more geared towards you specifically. You've been in business for 11 years. When did you actually become profitable in your business? Okay. So, so for me specifically, I've actually, things are kind of going up and down, um, like I'm, I'm assuming with almost every business, even Walmart, you know, but when I started, because I didn't have a whole lot of overhead costs, um, I almost had, almost, I want to say an immediate um, profit within, you know, within a couple of months. Um, I was blessed enough to kind of sign, sign up to simultaneously, and so I was very blessed it was awesome because of course that motivated me to on so i was like okay if i can do this you know immediately and come out with a profit then it's good but then there were there were times even after that three-year mark where things weren't going so great whether it was you know distractions in my life um and just you know being transparent there were it was on it was me because i allowed um some distractions to occur and so I wasn't as diligent. And so because I wasn't as diligent in my business, then I didn't just put it all down altogether. I just wasn't going as um, as hard as I was when I first started. And so once that occurred, then, yeah, um, some profits definitely decreased. And so but then when um, reality snapped in and I said, hey, wait a minute, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> then I had to kick it back in here and then I began to see a profit again. I think that that's important. First, thank you for being transparent. That is great. I appreciate that. And I know people that are watching this are going to appreciate it too, because people don't want this sugar coated, all things are lollipops and, and, and candy. And it, there wasn't any issue. They want to know about the valleys. Did you just take off and, and catapult and everything was, was peachy keen or did you have some, some issues? And you basically say, we had some issues. We had some highs, we had some lows. We worked through them. And I can relate to that. There are times I have lows when I'm working on close eye or, you know, sometimes I'll be just going hard and then either it'll be a distraction or a vacation or something happens. And then you may not, you have a lull where you may not go as hard, but you do, you have to pick you, you have to pick yourself back up and realize this is your purpose. This is your vision. This is your baby. If you don't go hard for it, nobody else is going to go hard for it. But you do have those times. And sometimes as entrepreneurs, we need to know that we're not the only person that has those lows or has those slows um, in our business and that there is an upside. They do get better. You do have the, the come up even when you have those, those uh, times where things may not be going quite the way that you want them to go. Now, let's talk about uh, this conference that you have coming up because you actually not only walk the walk and talk the talk, but you actually give back and help entrepreneurs um, do better business, um, have better business, get the education that they need to be entrepreneurs. Talk to me about the conference that you have coming up. So this year, um, we're actually having um, a networking summit in September, uh, September the 12th, to be exact, and it's going to be in a 
Augusta, Georgia, the Hilton Garden Inn. And so you just said it. It we a lot of times we make investments in and in, in the inventory, make investments in, you know, different areas, but some of us sometimes may not make the necessary investment in ourselves, in, in our learning, in in our process. And so what what I began to see, um, because target market for a long time was startups. And so what I began to notice is you have these startup uh, um, businesses that they had an idea. So they started this business. Once they started the business, they were just doing what whatever it was that they did. Whether if it was sell t-shirts, that's what they did. They sold t-shirts. But they did, didn't have a lot of the other education or training that they needed to run a successful business. Because just because you have a business, let's say, selling t-shirts, doesn't mean that you're doing everything right. You just have a maybe a passion that you're turning into a business. But there's a whole lot of other things that go along with that. And so with the conference, what I like to do is to bring in speakers that can come and teach. Uh, I'm not an expert in, in every area. So even if you know me, that's not enough. Knowing you is not enough. You know, mm -hmm. we said it earlier, everyone has different um, gifts, different talents and different areas of expertise. And so I like to bring in other um, conference speakers that can speak in their expert field. And so they can share with you or whoever is attending the conference. They can give them the information that they need as well as bringing entrepreneurs together, like what we talked about earlier as well, being like-minded. We have the same pain. We, if, we're, if, we, if you've been in um, business at any amount of time, at some point, I guarantee you, because you've gotten sick and tired of being tired you've wanted more you there's just certain similarities that you can be able to relate to and so but being at this conference i am really really confident in saying and in the years past because we've had them uh previously in atlanta um and here even in augusta i'm very confident to say that when the individuals come when attendees come um, that they're able to walk away with information from the speaker and um, knowledge that can help grow their business as well as takeaways on when just networking with other individuals. Um, I love after the conference, for example, last, last year, now able to see that a lot of the people, like one may be in one part of Georgia, another one may be in another part of Georgia, one's in Phoenix, um, Arizona, and so forth, and they have all, all were able to connect via social media, and now they're friends and now can help to share the other person's business. And so that that's the importance of marketing. That's the importance of networking. And so that's one of the things, that's the objective and the goal when we do these working summits is really to help small businesses to grow. Awesome. So who who are your speakers this year? <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad you asked me that question. Um, one of our most, uh, one of our outstanding and the speakers happen to be Lene Javette, and no. we're super excited uh, um, <laughs> because, she, um, Lene, you do. You have, have a lot of that to bring to the table, and there are certain people, you know, that you meet and lie that you really feel like every person should meet because they're, they're so awesome, they're so wonderful, and because they share their information openly, um, and you happen to be one of those individuals. Uh, um, another another speaker is uh, Ted McClyman. And he deals with things from a financial standpoint. Uh, he actually wrote a book called Money Makes Me Crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so he's a, he adds value. And I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, being able to talk, uh, uh, know how much money, that's important as an entrepreneur. Another speaker that we also have, um, her name is Amy Kilpatrick. And Amy is um, also very good when it comes to um, network marketing. She's, she has actually over 15 years of experience so um and then of course you always have um uh, uh, me there to to be able to answer questions um and that's one of the things that we do it toward the end of the summit is we have a um a discussion room. and so people can ask questions so i don't want when people come to the exusia networking conferences i don't want them to come and it's just another networking uh -huh. event uh -huh. where they exchange business cards no i want you to be able to walk away with something with something valuable and with the speakers like yourself and the other two that I mentioned, I am very confident they're going to be able to do that. 
I am super excited to be speaking at this event. Um, outside of just knowing you and knowing your level of excellence and, and where you operate and how you operate and that we're both members of Team Genius and we were both, you know, work under uh, Dr. Will Moreland. Outside of all of those great things, just seeing the work that you've done with Exusia, um, the information that I've done, the research, how you've grown your business and where it's at, I would come and support just for those things. Everything else is a cherry on top. Like that's just like the, 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 the double stamp of approval. But if I did not know you in any of those capacities, I would still come. Just from the, 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 the information you provided today, you know business. You understand what it takes to be successful. You've been in business for 11 years. And on top of that, you want to give back. That says a lot about a person above and beyond them being an entrepreneur. Just those, 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 those intricate pieces of who you are and your character. So thank you so much for putting this conference on. Thank you so much for asking me to come out and be a speaker. I'm very excited about this conference. My pleasure. And we're excited. Um, I love to see the the after stories. I have a great after story that I have not shared yet Ooh. from last year, event, but um, I'm definitely going to be posting it so that everyone else can um, see it as well. But yeah, we're really excited and really looking forward to this year. I think it's going to be awesome. And how many years have you done this? What I'm year? Sorry, I said, how many years have you done this? Which, which conference? Is this the third, fourth, fifth? This year, uh, this is our fourth year. Fourth year, okay. So consistency. Correct. We're, we're consistent. This is not a, a fly-by-night, first-year type of conference. This is our fourth, your fourth year doing this conference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And so the overall, the long-term goal is we are going to go from city to city. So if we haven't come to your city yet, just give us time um, because we've done Atlanta. We've done Augusta. Um, I'm not going to share where we're looking at going next year, Phoenix. but please Phoenix. continue going. <laughs> <laughs> Phoenix! <laughs> yes. And, and we even want to get back to Anna um, because we know there's a lot of op options, a lot of possibilities in Atlanta. But yeah, we're definitely looking forward to continue not only growing the, the summit, but also to grow, um, seeing us grow around the world. It's, it's, that's a deep passion of mine. Um, which is kind of linked with my, you know, with Exusia's brand is being able to see other people grow. And that's why we take really, really great pride we do in seeing others to grow. So we'll start to close with this. What does a day in the life of Ruby James looks like? Look like? <laughs> okay, so I, if I go to sleep, then I wake up early in the morning, <laughs> about four. Um, I have children, as I stated, they're younger children, uh, elementary and middle school, so I get them squared away, uh, get breakfast going, and um, and get them off to school. Then I, days that I'm super motivated, I actually get a little workout in. But um, if not, I, then sometimes if I'm busy, that's one of the areas that I have to sacrifice at time, time um, or that I choose to sacrifice maybe. Then I don't work out, and I end up um, actually going straight to the office, and that that's when I start, you know, doing the graphic designs or websites, depending on whatever projects that I have for that day. Um, and then in my day, pretty much stay in the office if I have no networking events like that. To about most of the time, about two o'clock. I try to get off about five thirty so I can go ahead get her going ready. Um, and then I try to stay off the computer uh, for the rest of the evening and spend that time with family. And that's about it. And then it starts all the way. And if I do have deadlines, then I go back into the office for a little, little bit. But um, for the most part, um, I try to stick to nine to five and work those hours. But if need be, then like I said earlier, you just have to get it in however you can get it in. And you give me a mogul -vation. You are a mogul -vator for me. I appreciate you taking this time to uh, speak with me this morning, to speak with my viewers this morning. Um, I love Mogulvation because I have this question that I ask myself all, all the time, which, what came first, the mogul or the money? And I have a belief that when you tune into your true mogul or who you are and your passion, your perspective, 
and you just you thug out and you know I'm th you know you thug I like that where you thug <laughs> out <laughs> you become the you know the thug of your industry at top tier the gangster that is what makes you a mogul and if you do what you do right and become a mogul in your industry the money will right. come and so I do mogul vacation because you should motivate yourself to be the best in your industry. And so I definitely see that in you, which is why I had you on Mogulvations today. Thank you so much for being here. How can people find you? How can people learn more about Ruby James, more about Exusia Marketing, more about the Exusia Summit that's coming up? Okay. Well, you you can find me on Facebook. You can find Exusia on Facebook at uh, forward slash Exusia. And I know that it may be different to spell it. It's E X O U S I A M G dot com. Um, for Facebook, same handle launcher, EXO USIAMG. Um, we're also on um, Google Plus. And recently, I've actually gotten on to Periscope and uh, done a couple of sessions on Periscope. So, there and on our, my personal Twitter is Ruby LLL, -L -L, which live and love life because uh -huh. that's just what we've been doing. Um, and so, once again, it's, it's Facebook. Um, our website address is www dot e x o u s i a m g dot com um and if you want more information for the event that's coming up which is it's your small business networking summit you can find e s b n s dot awesome again i am so honored to have you join me today thank you for making time thank you for thank making you. me making me jealous sitting outside on your back porch <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me, me Lene. And you can go out and sit out for a little bit today too. It's a, okay um, to take two minutes just to relax and uh, um, and then get back on point because you got to clear your head every now and then. <laughs> you are so correct. You know, this week has been uh, my son starts uh, high school this week, so I've been in and out. Oh of, wow! Yes, girl. Oh my God, so amazing. Got a little teary eyed and everything. Uh, you know, as you know, we're just moving to Atlanta, so I had to get him registered for school. Took him to freshman boot camp. We have uh, orientation last night, and he starts school on Monday. So I'm super excited. It's Bye. been a, a hellacious week working on my business, getting him back from his dad full time, getting him registered in school, and doing interviews. So, <laughs> you know, you know how I do. I just keep it. You know, I keep it. I keep. I keep it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so I appreciate you taking time. Well, I'm for sure me you're today. not be happy. Go ahead. Uh I hope your son has a great year. Um, all the kids, actually. My son, I had a son start in school, and then my other one's in um, elementary school. But, yeah, I hope they have a great year this year. Yes. And and thank you so much for having me today, Lene. And I can't wait until September 12th so we can really go and um, network and help one else out and get some businesses growing. Absolutely. I love it. That's why I can't wait to be there. Thank you, everyone out there that took the time to watch us today. We appreciate you. If you have any questions, um, please submit them down below in the comment section, and I will get to them if they're for Ruby specifically um, about uh, the conference or anything else. If you put a comment down there, I'll make sure that she gets it. Uh, this Thank you for tuning in to Mogulvations with Lene Javette, CEO and founder of Colesire. We'll see you next time. Javette at I am Lene Javette, and I just wanted to leave a quick word for you today, something for you to think about when you get down or you feel like you're trying.